Good evening. Welcome to Thai PBS English News Service. Tonight, you with me, Rung Thip Chonaparai. Today, the People's Alliance for Democracy, or Yellow Shirt, held a rally protesting against the reconciliation bill, which is due to be debated in the Legislative Assembly starting tomorrow. General Jam Long Si Mueang, leader of the Yellow Shirt movement, has submitted a letter to the House Speaker opposing the National Reconciliation Bill and indicated that if the House meeting considers the reconciliation bill tomorrow, the yellow shirt will expel Prime Minister. The controversial reconciliation bill will begin its consideration in Parliament tomorrow. And today, the yellow shirt group held a protest march from the Royal Plaza to Parliament. General Jam Long Si Mueang, leader of the Yellow Shirt, has submitted a letter opposing the National Reconciliation Bill to General Jan Komon, the Deputy House Speaker. General Jam Long claims that it is necessary for the good of the whole nation that consideration of the reconciliation bill is stopped as it will damage the legal system in order to grant an amnesty to former Prime Minister Thaksin Chinawat. The Yellow Shirts announced that if the House meeting goes ahead with the consideration of the reconciliation bill tomorrow, they launched a campaign to remove Prime Minister Ying Lak Chinawat. Meanwhile, Police Major General Vichai Sang Prapai, Deputy National Police Chief, indicated that the authorities have already held talks with the Red Shirt Group asking them not to come to protest at Parliament in order to avoid the risk of clashes. Former executive of the dissolved Thai Rak Thai Party have set up an event to mark the end of their five-year ban from politics and have indicated that they agree with the proposed constitutional amendment if the changes are carried out in a democratic way. Meanwhile, Thaksin Chinawat, former prime minister, has called for fair and creative politics and asked everyone to forget past conflicts so the country can move forward. The release of 111 white pigeons represented the freedom of 111 member executives of the defunct Thai Rak Thai Party to re-enter politics as today is the last day of their five-year ban from politics. Tomorrow, some of them will become members of Pur Thai Party. They stated that they support the government and that the constitutional amendment has to be completed in a democratic way. Meanwhile, former Prime Minister Thaksin Chinawat took part in a video conference to thank members of the so-called House No. 111 who have continued their support for the party even though they were banned from politics. He also mentioned that he will not abandon Nopacho or National United Front for, of Democracy. Thaksin also called for fair and creative politics for getting past conflicts for the good of the country. Following of the Aung San Suu Kyi visit at Mahachai district in Samut Sakhon province, Suu Kyi, Myanmar's opposition leader, said bringing Myanmar migrant workers home is her responsibility while the migrant workers pour out their problems to her. Here's more. It would have been a surprise if the factory in Samut Sakhon lacked of workforce today because thousands of Burmese workers gathering here to meet with the lady who they refer as Ame Su or Mother Aung San Suu Kyi. Aung San Suu Kyi, the leader of the National League for Democracy, or NLD, has given hope to Myanmar migrant workers during her visit to Mahachai district in Samut Sakon province. Suu Kyi promised that she will do everything to promote economic development in Myanmar so migrant workers can return to work in their home country. This brought joy to thousands of workers from Myanmar who gathered to greet their heroines this morning. Suji met with 30 selected Myanmar workers who pour out their problems to her. Laws of this land, which do provide protection for workers, are not always observed by everybody concerned. And this is to do with two things. One, of course, we need to educate our workers as to their rights and how uh, they should approach, why, what kind of legal means there are for defending their rights. Because whatever we negotiate with our host government, we want to do it in a harmonious way. And of course, we would also be asking uh, for help and support from the local authorities 
to make sure that our workers receive the kind of protection that they so much need. Uh, as you may have noticed, coming here is a, a little bit like coming to Burma. Uh, all the Burmese people in this area, I thought I was back in Rangoon, and it's been very good to see how their spirit is still strong in spite of the many troubles that they have been through. through. And all of them say one thing, they want to go back to Burma as soon as possible. That, of course, is part of our responsibility. I have said that everybody has a responsibility. They, too, have a responsibility. We, too, have a responsibility to create the kind of country to which all our people can return whenever they wish to. Not only Samusa Khan, but Aung San Suu Kyi has also scheduled to visit Burmese camp in Mesod. Of course, Thai PBS News will be covering this event. I'm Darin Klok Akara, Thai PBS, reporting from Samusa Khan. Thank you, Kun Darin. A crowd of Burmese migrants was waiting on the roadside to see their democracy icon Aung San Suu Kyi gave a speech to the gathering involving that she would take all Burmese migrants home within three to four years. Gangan Raktam was at Mahachai Market to report on Suu Kyi's visit and the possible economic effects of Burmese migrant workers returning home. Here's more. Early this morning, a crowd of Burmese migrant workers were shouting Ame Su, which means Mother Su, and holding pictures of Aung San Suu Kyi along the roadside at Mahachai Market in Samut Pragan province, which is home to the largest Burmese migrant community in Thailand. Today, Burmese migrants at Mahachai Market are gathering to welcome Aung San Suu Kyi, their democratic icon as it is Aung San Suu Kyi's first time being outside Myanmar after she has been released two years ago. Yen Yen A, a housewife who works in Bangkok, says that she's very glad to see Aung San Suu Kyi today as she is her hope for getting back to her homeland. She says she wants her child to go to school in Myanmar. Aung San Suu Kyi, leader of opposition and the National League for Democracy, visited Mahachai Market to meet her fellow countrymen and women, as well as to make a speech at the International Labour Organization. In her speech, she found that she will take her people home within three to four years and will hold talks with Thai authorities about Burmese migrants' quality of life to ensure they are provided with their basic human rights. She also asked her competitors to respect that Thai process. Another group of Burmese workers told Thai PBS that they will go back to their home only when Myanmar has a better economy. They said that here they do get high wages, but they have to work longer hours. Meanwhile, Sumthon Ratanapon, chairman of Samut Prakan's Chamber of Commerce, insists that the factories here already treat the workers fairly, and he believes that it will take quite some time to repatriate all the Burmese migrant workers in Thailand. Metika Limpon Chaitaran, owner of a shrimp farm and store at Mahashoy Market, says that losing the Burmese workers will definitely affect her business because Thai workers don't work at peeling shrimp anymore. But she is also sure that the higher wages in Thailand will slow the return of workers to Myanmar. There are over 200,000 Burmese migrants living in Samut Prakan province and generations of families have come here to work. Gangon Raktam, Thai PBS. Thank you, Kun Gangon. Thailand's opposition leader met Aung San Suu Kyi today at the World Economic Forum on East Asia. They discussed the future of Burmese workers in Thailand and Myanmar's economic reforms as foreign investors are expressing profound interest in investing in the new, more open country. At the 21st World Economic Forum on East Asia today. Abhisit Becha Chiwa, the leader of the, the opposition, held talks with the leader of Myanmar's NLD, Aung San Suu Kyi. The discussion focused on two main topics, namely the restructuring of the Burmese workforce in Thailand before ASEAN's integration in 2015 and Myanmar's economic forum reforms. We agree that the, one of the key challenges would be the economic reforms. You know, although there have been steps taken on, on issues like exchange rate, but in terms of economic laws and 
investment laws uh, needs to be uh, put in place to make sure they are transparent, fair and consistent. Additionally, Apisid noted that the launch of the ASEAN Economic Community in three years' time will increase labor inflow and outflow. This phenomenon will have a number of efforts, not least of all on wages. During their meeting, the Thai opposition leader said that Aung San Suu Kyi expressed concern over Burmese migrants she met in Samut Prakan in the, in the Smut Sakon province today, as many had complained about having problems with the authorities. On the other hand, the Burmese democracy icon said that she was delighted to visit Thailand as her first trip abroad in nearly a quarter century. The Secretary General of the UN Conference on Trade and Development, or Aung Tat, attended the World um, economic Forum on East Asia today. He said that corporate leaders from around the world are participating in the forum because they want to see how the Asian economies are performing, especially following China's lower growth target, which is attributable to the slowdown in the world economy. Still, he believes that the Asian economies will remain stable and that they play an important role in rebalancing the global economy. Here's more from Kun Bandit, Gert Bandit. Supatai Panichapak, Secretary General of the UN Conference on Trade and Development, or ANGTAD, commented that Asia Pacific is to be seen as the world's economic growth center. While the world economy is expected to expand by around 2% and the developed countries by a mere 1%, the average growth in Asian countries is forecast to exceed 6 percentage points. As economic uncertainties remain in the United States and the Eurozone, the growth in Asia will help rebalance the global economy. Additionally, Super Chai threw his support behind the Chiang Mai Initiative in establishing an Asian Monetary Fund, which is also a central topic at this year's WEF on East Asia. He said that the only way for Asia to reform the international financial system is to bring together member countries' financial reserves, which account for 70% of the world reserves. Although a single currency and monetary integration, such as exists in the Eurozone, are not necessary, he mentioned that Asian currencies should move in the same direction for stability in exchange rates and to protect the global supply chain. With robust economic prospects and sound reserves, the Secretary General hoped that Asia-Pacific will play a more prominent role in international discussions on trade, financial reform, and world reserves, in which the U.S. dollar is now the main currency. Super Chai also said that corporate leaders from around the world are attending this forum because they want to see how the Asian economy is performing especially following China's lowered growth target, which he said is attributable to the slowdown in the world economy. Still, the Secretary General of Antad believes that the Asian economies are thriving, which will mean a lot to the otherwise sluggish world economy. This is Bandit Gad Bandit, Thai PBS. And today is also day two of the Asia Media Summit 2012 opened this morning with a discussion, a session concerned with public service broadcasting, followed by a session which received considerable interest from the audience, harnessing social media and content delivery. Here's more with Hugh Adams. Lord Michael Williams, a trustee of the BBC in the UK, said that the BBC World Service is responsible for providing free and fair content to over 25 million people across Asia in 27 languages. The BBC is funded by the television license fee. However, like other true public service broadcasters, the BBC is protected by law from government interference. He reiterated that the heart of a PSB is the integrity of the staff and suggested that ASEAN could perhaps in the future have a pan-regional public service broadcaster to the benefit of the people in this region. Other speakers focused on how the broadcast media must cope with changing technology while maintaining their core values. Challenges may include viewer connection through digital technology, the updating of content and provision of quality programs whose limited audience would prevent commercial broadcasters from making. 
Meanwhile, Saleh Eddin Mao, the director of the Arab States Broadcasting Union, said the conventional media in the Middle East is being challenged by the Arab Spring phenomenon. He claims the public's expectations of how the media works and what content is presented are changing. For the first time, public service media is now on the agenda of many Arab nations. The director of the Asia and Pacific Institute for Broadcast Development insists that every country should have a public service broadcaster. He says the revised version of the Bangkok Declaration, a shared commitment for media regulators in Asia, should enable broadcasters to provide people in the region with quality media. Thank you, Kuni Hill. And that wraps up tonight's edition of Thai PBS English News Service. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mung Thip Chona Palai. Sawadee